housekeeping. Today just happens to be Integral Yoga Day, which makes our guest extra special. Um, today, B Yogi is joined by Avi Gordon, the director of the Integral Yoga Teachers Association. Before we get started, I'll introduce the two of us. So I'm Joe Fagan. I'm the director of strategic partnerships for B Yogi. Um, here at B Yogi, we offer membership programs for yoga instructors, yoga therapists, and other health and wellness disciplines. Um, our membership packages, of course, provide liability insurance, business and marketing tools and resources, as well as member benefits and industry discounts for yoga professionals. Um, our programs provide access also to low-cost health insurance, dental, vision, and telemedicine, which a lot of independent contractors sometimes have a hard time gaining access to. Um, and since we're seeing more and more yoga instructors move their business online, I do want to mention that our program covers not only face-to-face -face classes, but live online classes and even pre-recorded videos. Um, now remember, we're doing these webinars the first and third Wednesday of every month, so please keep joining, please keep sharing these events with your community, and again, if there's any topics of interest to you, please let us know. We, we do try to build these programs around the wants and needs of the yoga community, um, and of course, this video will be posted on our blog on biyogi.com, and on that, on biyogi.com, you can also find the schedule of upcoming events. Now I'd like to introduce you to our very special guest, Avi Gordon. Hey, Avi, thanks for joining today. You got it. Thanks, Joe. So Avi is the director of the Integral Yoga Teachers, Teachers Association at Yogaville, Virginia, and the host of the Integral Yoga Podcast. He's taught and studied yoga extensively, as you can imagine. Um, he's a certified Integral Yoga teacher at the advanced level and has completed his 200-hour advanced asana and meditation and noga, excuse me, yoga nidra trainings at the Kripalu Center in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. He's also a certified aerial yoga instructor. Um, so, Avi has been a school teacher in Taiwan, Israel, South Korea, and the U.S., as well as authoring an inspirational novel called A Light in the Tunnel, which you can find at alightinthetunnel.com. One last thing, today's going to be a little bit different, more of an interview and really an open conversation. I have some questions I've written down for Avi, Avi but I encourage all of you who are watching to put questions in the chat um, if you have something that you'd like to ask. Um, and I will, I'll do my best to, to, to find an opportunity to ask those to Avi. Um, we'll, we'll, try, we'll still try to save a few minutes at the end for additional Q&A. Um, so again, please submit any questions you have in either that chat or that Q&A box. Any questions, of course, that we can't answer today, we'll do our best to get answered and send out to everyone after the event. Um, now, again, let's get started. Thanks for joining us, joining us today, Avi. Yeah, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Oh, my pleasure. All right, well, let's get right into it. Can you tell me... What is Integral Yoga and how you would say it is unique? Yeah, okay. Um, first thing I'd like to say is, you know, I'm sharing my personal viewpoint uh, on what Integral Yoga is. So as I'll speak about in, in a minute, it's, it's defined pretty broadly. Uh, and there are many people that might have different definitions so I'll speak to what resonates with me and how I would define it. So I just want to say that first. So uh, I would define integral yoga is a, a system developed by Swami Satchidananda. Uh, it's comprised of the six classical branches of yoga. The physical practices, meditation and mantra practices, heart opening practices, selfless service and self inquiry. It's all integrated into a holistic system to awaken us to our true nature of peace and joy. The entire system rests upon a foundation of respect for all faiths, for diversities, and for the unity in our diversities. And put simply, uh, Swami Satchidananda would say, yoga is anything that helps you to be easeful, peaceful, and useful. <laughs> That's great. I, I, I think that's very eloquent, eloquently stated. I appreciate that. Um, so speaking on the Hatha classes, so Integral Yoga Hatha classes traditionally last, I guess, about an hour and a half. Is that right? Yeah, they're a bit longer than, I guess, you know, most probably uh, yoga classes, Hatha yoga classes, probably around an hour in time. So there's uh, some different components, uh, which leads to a longer class. Yeah. Gotcha. Can you, can you go into a little bit of that? What are the different components? Yeah. Uh, each class uh, incorporates postures, deep relaxation, which is a, a yoga nidra if you go into Shavasana. Uh, so every class has that, uh, has also pranayama, breathing exercises, 
and meditation. And Swami Satchidananda would even say, if you have to, you know, if you're running out of time as a teacher, don't cut the deep relaxation, the breathing practices, the meditation, take out, you know, an asana or two. So really those kind of um, moments, the time to go inward and, and to kind of relax and release into uh, our peaceful nature uh, is extremely uh, prioritized within a Hatha Yoga class. Gotcha. Interesting. All right, well, I guess if you don't mind, maybe we'll even take a step back. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of integral yoga um, and maybe how many people have been trained roughly as integral yoga teachers? Yeah, sure. Uh, history, it's, it's really vast and expansive, so I don't know if I'm, I'm necessarily the best person uh, to answer that, but, but I'll try. Uh, so, so Swami Satchidananda, you know, he started integral yoga. He's really, he's known uh, globally for speaking at Woodstock. Uh, he opened the festival and blessed the festival. Um, but, you know, integral yoga, it's not, it's not like this, uh, this system that is, uh, that doesn't have a history in itself, right? His, it's based on a guru lineage. So much of what he shared was passed down to him from, you know, his master, uh, Swami Shivananda, and it's based uh, primarily on, you know, the yoga, yoga sutras of, of Patanjali, uh, Ashtanga Yoga, uh, the eight limbs of yoga. Um, so it goes back, you know, into the realms where we don't even know the years or, you know, the scholars really, you know, dive deep uh, into the traditions that, you know, happened uh, in India uh, such a long time ago. Um, so there's been many stages of it, uh, but that, that's what I'd say, you know, briefly. Uh, in terms of how many teachers have been trained now, um, there we go. Did, I, did I lose you for a second? I, you were frozen for just a minute. I'm not sure if that was, um, if, honestly, I'm not sure if that was on your end or mine, but it looks like we're okay now. Okay. Uh, so in terms of uh, teachers that we've trained, uh, it's uh, to get a, a specific number is tough. They didn't always keep records back in the day as well as we keep now, but I'd, I'd, I'd approximate probably around 20,000 teachers or so uh, all over the world. Yeah. Interesting. It's funny. I thought I knew everything about Woodstock. I've watched the documentary several times. I've read books about it, listened to the album. I did not know that Sachi Dananda um, opened the open Woodstock with some comments. That's, that's interesting. I'll have to go back and find that. Is there a video of that? Do you know? Oh yeah, there's plenty. Uh, if you go to integralyoga.org, uh, you, you'll see videos of him opening up the festival and you, you know, the audio is not great, but you can hear, hear his message and whatnot. And then he talks about it, you know, later on, he, did, he hadn't spent much time in the States, you know, before then. So, you know, Woodstock uh, as one of, you know, his first experiences, <laughs> you can imagine. But he really, you know, identified, I think the positive components of that experience for him. You know, many people looked at that and they said, okay, people doing drugs and running naked all over the place, you know, it's mayhem. Uh, but but he, he focused on the, the amount of people that were living in close proximity with without necessarily enough food, uh, you know, access to bathrooms and, and all of that and how peaceful it was and how, how much everyone uh, got along. Um, and he was actually told, I, I, what I've been told uh, by many people not to go to Woodstock and speak there, like across the board, everyone told him, no, don't do that. But there was some, you know, calling in, inside of him uh, and he, he went anyway and did it. How interesting. I love that. What a, what a great story too. And I, and I always feel that Woodstock was kind of the beginning, the, the, the starting point for what became such a great way for people to gather and we create these interpersonal connections. I could probably go on for hours on, on that subject, but we'll try to, we'll stick to integral yoga for today. But that's super interesting. I want to go back and, and look that up. Um, all right, over to, um, I, I want to ask you about um, the Lotus Shrine. Can you, can you just give me, you know, as if I knew nothing about it, what, what is the Lotus Shrine? Yeah. Lotus. Uh, I could say for myself that was walking inside of Lotus uh, was a moment of, of uh, connection for me. Uh, it just, a lot of things clicked. So it is um, a giant temple that is uh, in the shape of a Lotus. 
coming out of a, a, a man-made lake. Um, and uh, it's where I live. It's actually down the street from, from my house, which I can't believe I, I live here now. Um, but it's dedicated to all religions. So the interfaith work was extremely important to Swami Satchidananda and Yoga. Uh, the, the saying is, truth is one, paths are many, right? So there's many, we all start, you know, maybe at the bottom of the mountain, and there's many ways to get up the mountain. And so seeing all religions as being different paths, uh, but everything is kind of trying to point towards that, that light, that truth. And so when you go into Lotus, the bottom level is sectioned off for, uh, for different religions. And you see, you know, holy objects and texts uh, from, those, from those religions. And, and for myself, I could say, like, as I walked around and read the excerpts, I was like, everyone is talking about the same thing here. Uh, <laughs> ultimately, which it, is so amazing because, you know, I mean, I think many of us and for myself, I, you know, grew up, you know, with such competition behind religion and, and contention. And so walking into a place that's dedicated to seeing uh, kind of the joint nature, the oneness of all of it uh, was, was pretty special. And then the top level of Lotus is a, a, a beautiful meditation hall uh, where people go up and, and meditate. Interesting. Wow. So I, I do want to mention to everybody, I don't know if you can see in the chat, but as uh, Avi and I are having a discussion where there, um, um, some of our folks on the, back, on the back end behind the camera are posting links. Uh, there's a link to the Woodstock Guru, and then there's also some information that apparently the Lotus is closed during the pandemic and under renovation, but you can take a virtual 360 tour at www.lotus.org. Um, but Avi, I was trying to write, write this down. I hope I got this right. Can you explain the motto? I think you mentioned it's truth is one, paths are many, um, and then really just what the interfaith component of integral yoga is. Yeah. So, okay. I'll say this relates to, you know, unity and diversity, All right? So, you know, yoga is defined as unity, right? The, the connection between all things. That's very, very important. I think, you know, many of us, if we practice, we, uh, we feel that, that we're, that we're connected to something larger than ourselves. But what is also really important is honoring the diversity, you know, amongst human beings throughout nature. So it's saying that we're all connected, we're all the same in a way, but at the same time, each of us is, is unique. And that's, that's a celebration. So ourselves are unique, but also our journeys are unique. Our understanding of the world is unique. Our, under, our, our search for truth is, is totally unique to ourselves. So integral yo yoga is honoring that. It's saying, you know, everyone is, is welcome here, um, whatever your path. And I, I think that's important. The, it's not so rigid. It's, it's very, very inclusive. Gotcha. But I, that, that to me, draw, you know, that draws me in just, <clears throat> you know, that methodology, that way of thinking. I, I love hearing things like that. Um, all right. So kind of more about Integral Yoga and what you, and what you guys do up over at Yogaville and the Integral Yoga Teachers Association. Can you tell me a little bit about the 200-hour training? Um, and I know you have a 300-hour kind of advanced training certificate. Can you go into a little bit about, about those, um, those offerings? Yeah. So, you know, the 200-hour uh, is, 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 you know, like the intro training. Most yoga teachers take a 200 hour training. So, so we offer that as well. Um, but it's again, seen as, as a holistic approach. Uh, normally when you, when you do a training, right? Like you're eating healthy food, uh, you're, you're doing some karma yoga, you know, selfless service around. So you're, you're helping in the kitchen to prepare meals and clean dishes and whatnot. Um, meditating. It, 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 Swami Sachinananda, I, I heard he, he said that we're not, you know, training yoga, yoga teachers. We're, um, we're, we're creating a container to, for people to become yogis. I don't know if I said that exactly right, but that was, that was his idea, you know, to, 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 to affect people on the whole level, the, the holistic level of themselves. So now it's a little tricky, you know, considering these times of the pandemic and whatnot, 
because being in person in a training has been so important uh, to us for the reasons that I, that I just said, but we are offering them online. It's been, uh, you know, tough transitioning considering those priorities. Um, but it also opens us up to being able to uh, share the teachings with so many more people, you know, that aren't able to, uh, you know, access coming in person normally, uh, financially too, it's, it's more reasonable to take, take a training online. So that's kind of the basic level, but we still try to emphasize all those other components. And then the 300 level is, is pretty unique. If you've already taken a, a 200 hour uh, training, and even if it isn't from integral yoga, you can apply to, to, to enter our 300 hour program. Uh, but it's unique because it's, you can mix, mix and match the trainings. There are about 20 different trainings that, that you can choose to take um, and then all have a different hour level. So if you're interested in you know, yoga of recovery or, or, or yoga for cancer treatment or Raja yoga or meditation, you can choose those and kind of cater it to your own interests um, and add up to 300 hours and become certified at that level. Gotcha. Very interesting. And, um, and while you were speaking, by the way, I noticed that, um, that our team had posted a link to um, where you can find these online teacher trainings at IYTA.org forward slash events. By the way, I do want to mention everybody, we will send all of this information in a post, uh, post, post webinar email so that you, um, if, you, if you didn't have time to write it down, we'll make sure we send it out. It does look like one of our audience members, and I just want to confirm this with you, Avi, um, Prim Anjali posted a, a separate link to the Integral Yoga Teacher Training at uh, yogaville.org forward slash yoga dash teacher dash trainings dash landing. Is that a link you're familiar with? Is that? Yeah, that works. That works too. That works too. Gotcha. Well, good. So great information on the, in that chat box. If anybody wants to follow up on some of this information that we're discussing. Yeah. Um, I, I see she also posted uh, a link to a documentary, the Woodstock guru there as well. If someone's interested. Oh, that was I gotcha. See, perfect. Excellent. Um, I did have a question that popped up. Um, if I believe it's from Lori G. Uh, is the 300 hour training offered online? Uh, so as I mentioned, you know, it's not just one training. The, the trainings are broken up. So some of them are to answer, answer the question, right? You, the 300 hour is not something you do all at once. You do it at your own time, time period. So you could take uh, Raja Yoga TT is coming up in a couple months. Uh, and that's a, around 100 hours right there. So that's going to be offered online. So that would be, you know, a third of the 300 hours as an example. Gotcha. Perfect. I hope that answered the question there. All right. And I know, um, I know meditation, of course, is a big part of the practice of yoga and, and, and integral yoga specifically. Can you, could you tell me, or just in the very basis, could you define what, what, or how you, would you define meditation? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so again, my personal definition of, of what meditation is. Uh, uh, how would I define? I think it's a, a connection to stillness, really. And it also may be a connection to the fluctuations that all of us experience, right? So when I meditate, maybe maybe thoughts come in and I'm thinking and then I see the thoughts come in and then, and then they dissipate and they leave and there's some stillness in. I think what uh, meditation means to me is, is really connecting with the witness, right? So I'm observing what's happening. I'm taking that time to both observe and then ultimately even let go of the observer. So then there's nothing even observing. You're just experiencing peace. There's no, there's no words, there's no thoughts, that, that happens. Um, but without that kind of that deep stillness, the deep experience of peace, you know, I would say it's being the witness. So I'm just watching what's happening. I'm watching myself get agitated, and then I'm watching myself have, you know, a peaceful thought, um, frustrating, frustrated with meditation, thinking about what I'm going to eat next, whatever it is. All of that to me still would be meditation. Like there isn't anything that, that is not. I think often I hear people say, you know, I don't know how to meditate or I, I can't meditate. You know, maybe not allowing themselves to, to be human. Um, so an important component to me is, is, is all is welcome, right? 
I, I can I can think during meditation. It's almost inevitable. But even really, you know, well trained meditators, there's still thoughts, you know, that happen, and and I think the thoughts release more when we allow them to be okay, and we're not trying to um, force something to happen. And the last thing I would say is is love, a love for meditation. Uh, again, it's often I think put in a box of something I have to do, something that's good for me, that type of a thing. For me personally, that, that takes away from the effectiveness of it. If I love it, if it's a time where I can just take a time out and kind of release to what's happening, um, then, then it's, really, it's really wonderful. Very interesting. I, you have a, a great way with words there, and I really love how you paint, painted a colorful picture of, of meditation. I've never really heard, of ex, heard it explained that way. You know, particularly love how you talk, th talk about, because I've experienced the same thing during meditation. It's very hard to really block everything out. And, and in my mind, I felt I wasn't doing it right. So to understand that it's part of the process is to, is to accept the thoughts, allow them, and not to, not to fight against them. That makes a lot of sense. Um, anyway, thank you for explaining that. I feel better about things now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Looks like we do have a couple of other questions coming in here. Um, and, and it looks like, Prim, thank you very much. You continue to post some great information for everybody to take a look at. She's posting some, some links to the live um, trainings and classes around the world. Um, uh, Lou Weisberg had asked, uh, can the integral 300 hour be built on a different non-integral, for example, 200 hour? Okay, so you can, I guess, and still satisfy Yoga Alliance's 500-hour RYT. So I guess, can you take a, a non-integral yoga 200-hour and then jump into the advanced integral 300-hour? Um, is that, a, what, does that work for your program? And do you know if that um, satisfies the Yoga Alliance's 500-hour? Yes, we do have a, a pretty short application into our 300-hour program. Uh, it's free to apply. Um, but we basically just want to make sure um, that, that the 200 hour program that you've taken um, is, I guess on some level, legitimate or it, it, it can be applied to our 300 hour program. Sometimes we'll ask that maybe you uh, do a little bit of, um, you know, readings and research on what integral yoga is before you would start in the 300 hour program. Uh, but most people are accepted uh, who have taken their 200 hour elsewhere. And then also, uh, yes, to Yoga Alliance, you can submit your 200-hour diploma, and then you can submit your 300-hour diploma, and they don't necessarily need to be from the same school in order to become an RYT 500. Perfect. Thank you. Great question, Lou, and thank you for that great answer, uh, our, Avi. Um, there, uh, another question came in. I uh, figured might as well jump on this. How is integral yoga different from Ashtanga or other types of yoga? Is it more of a, is it more of a synthesis? This was asked by Gigi, it looks like. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you could define it that way. Um, it, it's hard to speak directly into how it would compare to some, something else. I, I'll just speak more to the, the holistic approach um, and especially the focus on the mind. Uh, so Swami Sachinanda would say, you know, as the mind, the body would follow, everything else follows. So real emphasis on, on having a clean mind and, and connecting with uh, our, our peaceful na nature. And right? you would say, peace is our birthright, right? It's our, our, our true nature is peace. So integral yoga uh, wants to reconnect with that, that peaceful nature. Um, yeah, I hope that, that answers your question. I don't like to get into kind of a comparison so much with something else that I, I don't know um, as much about. I can, I can only speak to, to what integral yoga is more. Gotcha. Well, this question might be a little bit more specific and kind of falls in line. So I want to, I want to jump on it before we kind of switch topics here. Um, and it, Alexand, and I, I'm terribly sorry if I mispronounce this name, Alexandrine, um, she wrote, integral yoga seems more spiritual. I'm wondering if we can teach it to our baby yogis without being seen as a guru. And in this case, could you please give us some tips? Baby yogis? Yeah. I, pre I presume new, newer yoga instructors. I, um, mm -hmm. Alexandrine, if you want to explain um, or, uh, or clarify what you mean by baby yogis, if you, if you just mean new, newer, newer instructors, I believe. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, I, newer instructors. She clarified. New newer instructors. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, speaking for myself, I, you know, I I, I might have felt uh, odd for periods in my life for kind of having the draw towards uh, being spiritual. We can call it, but I've kind of come around to see that I think all of us have that kind of yearning and desire. We we all are spiritual already. You know, we're not just this body. There's there's something more happening for all of us, even though maybe it's not so culturally acceptable. And we we try to kind of put that away and, and block it away. Um, so I think even for a beginner, someone that hasn't maybe connected to their spirituality in a long time, I definitely think integral yoga is a very gentle way of, of moving into that. It's not incredibly shocking to the system. The level one class, you know, really step by step, uh, slowly takes us, you know, through the components uh, of the class, you know, connecting to the mind, the body, the breath. Um, so many people who haven't kind of been spiritual in a while, they tend to really uh, appreciate, I think, that that component because it has been existing there. It's just kind of uh, sat dormant. But again, that's that's my experience. I mean, there could definitely be, you know, someone that's doesn't want to go there. You know, I just want to practice the the physical components of yoga and I don't want to go into the spiritual realms or anything like that. For that type of a person, if you really feel strongly that way, perhaps it wouldn't be um, the best training um, or maybe just not the right time, maybe in the future. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense, you know, and I, and I presume there's, you know, different people that want something different out of yoga each time. And, um, you know, understanding the right path for you is probably a good, um, you know, self-discovery, I, I would, for lack of a better term. Um, well, that's great. Well, I, kind of just to shift here, can, can you tell me about karma yoga? I know I've, I've read another, we talked about it before, but can you just um, explain to me what karma yoga is? Mm. Okay, so, you know, karma, karma yoga, uh, briefly dis described would be, you know, selfless service. Um, that, you know, action that I'm taking in my life is, is to serve others. But what I find personally very interesting about this is when we, when, when I do that, I, I serve myself the most, right? Like I, I feel really good. So it's about being useful. So if I have an opportunity to help someone else or, you know, do something that, that's good, I'm going to go to bed at night and feel a lot better. Therefore it's very, very much self-serving. And Swami Sachinanda talked about that too. But I think that's very different than kind of like, pulling yourself, kicking and screaming, I could say towards like, oh, I have to do this for someone else. You know, I don't really want to, but I have to do it. To me, you know, uh, that's not really, that's not really it. I mean, service is definitely a component of, uh, of integral yoga, a real emphasis of Swami Satchidananda, that ultimately, you know, we are all here to serve, you know, and, and I really resonate with that strongly. I think it's the truth. Like if we all kind of look deep and say, what do I want to do with my time alive? Like, well, what matters? Ultimately, it's doing some type of good uh, for, for someone beyond just, just myself. Um, so karma yoga can be seen as our entire lives. That's how I kind of define it now. Everything I'm doing you know, is, is service, you know, even, even eating, why do, why am I eating? I'm eating so that I'll have energy to, uh, to serve for other people. And I forget that all the time. Uh, but, but ultimately I agree with it and, and try to remember it as often as possible. Gotcha. Thank you. No, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, yoga aside, I think, you know, service as a, you know, as a, as a behavior um, is, is just wish, you know, wish and, and hope it continues to be instilled more and more in, in, in everybody as we, as we move forward as a, as a community. I, you know, I think that's a, such an important component to life, if you will. Yeah. So if, it's, if I could say that, you know, just the essence of yoga, right? Unity that we're all connected to each other, right? Kind of moves away from maybe this idea of competition taken too seriously, I would say, you know, and that pandemic has, has shown that to us also, right? It doesn't stop at the borders of a country. It doesn't understand what that is. Uh, so what I say is we're connected to each other. We're in this together, whether or not we want to be. 
Right. Yeah. And again, I think you nailed it that the pandemic, I think in a lot of ways has, has kind of shown that it's, you know, it's, it's us versus this, this thing in a way. And, and a lot of times, you know, you just, you, you kind of find a sense of community in, in these, you know, what, what, what are perceived is a, you know, is a, is a, is a negative, but you know, a lot of positive comes out of it, if you will. Um, that's great. All right. Sorry. I don't mean to get distracted here. So can you tell me about the living, the, excuse me, the living yoga training program that, uh, that you guys host at Yogaville? Yeah. So that's a Yogaville, Virginia. Uh, we're located about an hour uh, from Charlottesville. It's kind of closest major city, uh, hour and a half from Richmond. You can come here, you know, it's, it's really in the mountains, um, pretty, pretty isolated, secluded. Uh, this is where I live. This is an ashram, kind of the, the headquarters of integral yoga. Right now, you know, it's not open, but hopefully it will be open in, in, in the future. And I think the, the light program we call it living yoga training program is really unique. So it's for people you might not, you know, have interest in becoming a yoga teacher per se, uh, instructor, but I am interested in kind of just having an experience of yoga and living in an ashram. So you can come here and you can practice and, and just live with Sangha with, with community, uh, for about, for about a month. Yeah. Gotcha. So can you, you know, just to get a little personal here, can you tell me what's been your most challenging thing on your path to becoming a yogi? Hmm. Hmm. I think the most challenging is, <laughs> I'll say, you know, not being a hypocrite. <laughs> because, you know, often we're, we're like studying uh, these, you know, scriptures and, and having maybe deeper spiritual conversations. and you know, I might understand something on an intellectual level, right? But I've noticed the ability for human beings to compartmentalize, right? So I can go into a class and be very peaceful and um, talk about these different things. And then, you know, afterwards, you know, I'm driving home and I get angry at the person cutting, cutting me off in front or whatever it is that kind of presses my buttons. So that's really the challenge is to kind of incorporate what I'm understanding on an intellectual level and, and really feel it, like embody it. Um, yeah. And, and not be afraid to grow, right. Not be afraid to ask how much better can it be? Right. I, I find that to be a uh, very kind of a universal sentiment is that we don't know how much better it can be until we experience it. Like, I don't know. I don't know what it might feel like to grow more than what I am right now. I only know what I am right now. So it's like having that courage, the challenge to continue to investigate myself, to see where I need to clean myself up internally, where I, maybe I'm being, I'm being phony or inauthentic. Yeah. Interesting. Well, in, in that vein, in your mind, what can, how would you define a guru? Or what is, what is a guru? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, Defining a guru. Well, ultimately, I would say, you know, a guru is defined by the teachings. Like the, te the yoga teachings themselves are, are the guru, right? There's some, there's some different aspects of the guru. So it's, it's the teachings. There's the guru person. So the guru is another, uh, another human um, that has attained a certain level of, of mastery that is able to be a mirror uh, for us. Right, and is extremely useful on the path. So say say a mirror because you know a mirror doesn't judge. Many people have been extremely affected by Swami Satchidananda. He's become their guru because he was able to reflect for them, you know, what he saw, and that reflection showed you know the beauty. Maybe again where they they needed to to get cleaned up a little bit, all of that. But it was such a pure reflection that it was extremely helpful. To, to grow and move forward on the path. So that's a guru in, in the physical form. And I hope I, hope I define that um, okay. But the last thing I'll say is like the inner guru is, is, is maybe the most important one, right? And that's like the truth that we already know inside. Like we already know what's right. There's a guru that lives inside me, that lives inside all of us, that knows what the right thing is. Um, so listening to that. Gotcha. 
that that uh that makes a lot of sense um when you put it into words like that and i do see we've had a few questions come in i'm just going to go ahead and ask these couple of last questions for you um, before we jump into that, I'll give us some time, I think, to just go over these other questions. But, but really just kind of, you know, as you, as you just discussed the inner guru, I think this kind of fits in line here. So what mental tracks would you like to release and feel don't really serve but are off, often still present? Hmm. And mental tracks <laughs> to release. I mean, I think judgment mostly. It's like I'm just realizing more and more that judging other people, you know, how they're doing, what I think of them, taking my opinion so seriously. I find myself doing this all the time, you know, throughout the day. It just doesn't, it doesn't serve me well. Like, it doesn't seem to really matter what my opinions are <laughs> of other people. Like, and who am I to, to rank you and say, you know, Joe is, Joe is good or Joe is bad. I like this or that. But it's so hard to release for, for whatever reason, it's like an automatic thing in, in the mind that's happening, that maybe it's a survival mechanism that I need to kind of assess my situation and then assess other people around me and, and decide, you know, who I like and, and who I don't, who I want to be with. But yeah, I mean, I would like to release it as much as possible. Also knowing that it's probably going to be work that I continue doing throughout the course of my life. Sure. I feel it goes back to that, you know, to the way you explain meditation. It's almost allowing and understanding that those thoughts are going to come, maybe even somewhat or completely involuntary and just understanding what they are and, you know, breathing through them. I, I don't know. Right, exactly. And I guess, you know, and that aspect too that you bring up is the judgment of the self, right? Is that like, okay, I'm analyzing other people, but that's just really about me analyzing myself and saying, you know, how am I being perceived by, by other people? Am I impressive? Am I not? You know, do they like me? All, all of that. And then, you know, maybe getting to a place where, you know, what other people think about me is, is really their business, not mine. <laughs> but again, pretty, pretty challenging. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you. Now, this, this is great. And, you know, obviously, we're, you know, we're, we're talking, of course, about, you know, some, you know, components of integral yoga and about Yogaville, but, you know, really uh, appreciate you giving me the opportunity to ask some, you know, what I consider personal questions and, you know, just kind of you opening up to us. I think that, you know, sometimes you glean so much great information out of that and just really appreciate that. And so in that vein, I'd like to kind of throw one more your way and hope I don't throw you off, but I'd love to hear you describe in your own words, your own personal yoga philosophy. Oh, uh, just simply that it's, that it's everything, you know, it's everything that I do. It's having a conversation. It's mowing the lawn, changing my baby's diaper. Like it's just, it's a quality of, of being, it's being really, it's kind of just relaxing into uh, what I am relaxing into what I am. I could say. Um, and then, then kindness that, stems from an understanding of, of the unity that, that we're all connected to each other. Uh, and therefore, you know, I want to be kind. I want to support other people um, by accepting who, who they are, you know? Yeah. That, to me, that that's yoga. <laughs> that's great. Avi, that's fantastic. Thank you. I, again, I, you know, I appreciate you entertaining the, 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 the somewhat personal questions there and, uh, you know, it's just, it's really, it's really great to get a snapshot on, on your philosophy and your understandings. Honestly, I feel a little bit more at peace after we've spent 40 minutes chatting back and forth. <laughs> um, but, uh, so, but now I'd, I'd really, I would like to, to just, if we have, if you have a few more minutes, just go through and see what questions have come up in this chat. I see a few have, have come up and we'll see what we can answer. And again, anything that we can't answer today, we can always answer post webinar. So if um, we don't have the information or if we don't get to it there, there'll be plenty of opportunities to follow up here. Um, I'm going to kind of go back up and see where we left off on these. By the way, I do want to give a shout out to Prim Anjali, and I hope I am pronouncing that correctly, who's really been great over in this chat area um, answering questions. She even explained at one point, um, you know, her role with you guys. And uh, apologies, Prim, that we had never had a chance to connect, but really appreciate you following up with information and even um, in real time answering some questions here. I think that's been some great interaction. Really appreciate that. Um, six. Um, 
So Ursula Wong, and, and I think this may have been answered by Prima Jolly, but just so we can put it out there, um, she found that some of the integral yoga trainings are not accepted by way by YA. I guess this was, wasn't really a question, um, but I don't know if you could speak to that. Are, are some accepted and some not? Or um, I'm not even sure if that's a subject uh, we. Uh... They should all be accepted. Uh, feel free to uh, email me if you have a specific question, director at iyta.org. I'd be happy to to look at what you're talking about and, and address that. But uh, as far as, as far as I know, all of all of our trainings are accepted uh, by Yoga Alliance. Perfect. Thank you. And that was really nice of you to give out your email there, director at iyta.org, if you have any real specific questions like that. Um, Lori G had written, wrote, what was that called again? Month experience? I'm not sure what we're referencing here. I'm sorry, Lori, if you want to retype in your question um, and maybe put some clarity in there, I apologize. I understand. I think she's okay. talking about the the living yoga training program, the light program, uh, could probably, probably find a link to that real quick. But if you go to yogaville.org, you'll find the uh, living yoga training. Again, it's like a month long immersion program here, really reasonably priced. Um, but again, it's on hold right now, but hopefully will be taken off hold soon. And, and it looks like Prim had posted that a link to um to where you guys can look at that that light. Uh, yeah, she just posted it. Yeah. Um, and Ursula also mentioned, and, and so she mentioned that she contacted Yogaville a few months ago, and they were closed to the public. She's kind of she asking, "How are you there? Is is Yogaville currently closed due to the pandemic?" Yeah, yeah, we are to the public right now. Um, yeah, for myself, I mean, those who live here and work here, you know, we're we're basically the only only ones. Um, but. Again, I'm hoping, hoping that changes soon, but we're all trying to stay safe. We do have, you know, a, a large elderly community. A lot of the, the Swamis, the disciples of Swami Sachidananda, you know, are in their later years. So we, we do have to be, be careful and make sure to keep everyone really safe. Perfect. Thank you. Um, a question from Gigi. And I, again, if I am mispronouncing anybody's name, I apologize ahead of time. I've, you know, I have a limited education on that, on that front, but, uh, um, she wrote, Avi, appreciate all of your sharing. And I, I mirror that, by the way, Avi, really do. Um, can you, she asked if you could talk a bit about your book, for whom it was written, how did it transform you, any, any insight into, into your book? Mm. Oh, all right. Thanks for, thanks for asking. Um, yeah, so I'm, I love to read fiction myself. I love the power of a story. Um, and I was a teacher uh, for, for a bunch of years. And I have very strong views on education. I just think it's something we could do, you know, a lot better. Um, then I, I realized that, you know, I'd been kind of criticizing, you know, the education system, some of our social systems uh, for some time. And I was like, well, I don't want to criticize anymore. I want to create something. So I created the story of how things might unfold in our future that would lead us to a better place you know, not necessarily a utopia or anything, but just something better, like constant progression. And education is uh, the foundation of it. So through the story, you know, a new type of school is created. Um, and it also has the theme of realistic heroism. So characters who, you know, have a lot of courage to change systems and speak out um, in, a, in a sort of realistic way. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Just uh, for, for clarity, um, you can find that book at alightinthetunnel.com. Yeah, it's also on Audible and Amazon if you want the audiobook or Kindle version. It's all available. Yeah. Thank you. I see at least two more questions here. And looking at the timestamp at this one over in the q and I'll go back to this one. I mean, I know we somewhat touched on this, but um, Susan, Roger, Susan Roger, excuse me, has asked, please describe the typical IY class, integral yoga class, um, what comes first, how long is each segment? How is the class structured? Anything you can um, relate on that? Okay, yeah, <laughs> briefly, and it differs a little bit depending on the, on the teachers, but you know, we begin with a chanting, op opening chant, uh, followed by some uh, you know, eye movements. I don't know if you've ever done, uh, called Netra of the Eye Mum, which is some like, exercises with the eye muscles that we do, which is very unique, which I never did before integral yoga. I would find it to be uh, very effective. Uh, then some warm-ups, uh, then we do sun salutations. We move through, you know, the asana posture, posture sequence. Uh, then that, that takes up the, the bulk of the class, um, around 45 minutes uh, to an hour or so for the, the postures. Uh, a lot of emphasis also on the spine, I'll mention. Uh, just 
twists and uh, forward bends, backward bends, uh, really emphasizing that, that the spine is, is crucial to, to a healthy body. Uh, so then after the postures, uh, deep relaxation, which is uh, also called yoga nidra, which we do a body scan, it's kind of tense and release all areas of the body, totally relaxing. Uh, then after that, we do uh, pranayama, breathing exercises, uh, a few different uh, types of exercises, depending on, on the teacher. Alternate nostril breathing um, is one of them. Uh, Kapalabhati, which is you know kind of the fire breath, really get the energy moving. So a few breathing practices, and then finally, uh, a meditation uh, to conclude the class. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Great explanation there. Rebecca Elson has uh, wrote a question. She wrote, I'm starting the virtual integral yoga 200 RYT next week. By the way, congratulations, Rebecca. And she just asked if you have any tips. Mm. Tips. Um, just maybe don't be afraid to ask questions. <laughs> you know, uh, for me, that's really important. If, if, if you have a question, if something is unclear yourself, good chance that someone else uh, has that question too. Uh, so yeah, and just dive, dive into it, you know, make, make it your own and enjoy it. Love it. I like it. Come with your curiosity and, and open up and open up to it. I, that's great. I think that's great advice. Um, Ursula asked a specific question and I, I think this is a good one as well. Um, so if you take the 200 hour integral yoga training, when you already have a 200 hour Hatha yoga certificate, and again, I know a lot of these questions are, are, are Yoga Alliance um, uh, geared, and I'm not sure that you, you may or may not know, but I want to ask it anyway. Um, do you know if, so if that happens, if you take the 200-hour IY training when you already have the 200-hour Hatha Yoga Certificate, does that count towards your, the Yoga Alliance's 500-hour uh, YTT? Yeah, Yoga Alliance doesn't do that. So, you know, they, they consider, you know, one 200-hour training. Um, you can't kind of take 200, two 200-hour 200 trainings wouldn't be 400 hours towards your your 500 hour level. And that's just based on kind of um, the level of, of the training you're expecting to kind of get more of an advanced level training once you start on the 300 hour path. But again, for integral yoga, almost always we, we accept people that have taken their 200 hour for, from other traditions. If you want to move into the, the 300 hour uh, training, but for some people, you know, you've taken your 200 hour many years ago and you feel like you need a refresher and for you, if it's more about having the actual experience than getting a credential, which I say, you know, that, that's great if that is your priority, um, then maybe don't be so concerned about that and take another 200 hour program if you're feeling that that's where you're at. That's great advice. Excellent. Well, I, I think we've gotten through the questions and, um, and certainly if anything else comes up, we can, you know, we can send to you directly, Avi, after, after this, um, after this, if anything popped up on Facebook or comes into the chat, we can send to you and just have after answer, after, excuse me, answer after this. But I just, re I really want to thank you. I think this has been a very enlightening discussion. I think this has been a great back and forth. Really appreciate you opening up to us. Um, appreciate your time and, and kind of giving, you know, us in the B-Yoga community um, some education on what you guys, the wonderful things you're doing over at, at Yogaville and the Integral Yoga Teachers Association. Um, at, you know, in, as a representative of B-Yogi, we have been so delighted with this partnership. It's been a, a wonderful partnership for us and, you know, really love to, to continue to expand on this. And um, again, just really appreciate your time, Avi. Yeah, I appreciate it too. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I, I enjoy it. So thanks for asking some some good questions. Thank you for everyone out there for asking. And of course, feel free to follow up if uh, anything else comes up. Joe, would be a good time to, to mention the virtual studio now, or did you have something else before that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I meant to say that too. So yeah, you've, you've um, yeah, can you tell me, I know that you have a daily schedule, I think for virtual classes, I think Graham might have put it in there. But uh, yeah, if you, if you don't mind, just mention, can you talk a little bit about that virtual studio? Yeah, so this is something that didn't exist, you know, before the pandemic, um, but we moved everything online uh, and we have a really full schedule every single day uh, up there for you. So especially if you've maybe uh, never heard of integral yoga before, it's your first time uh, kind of being, being exposed to it. I recommend just, just taking a level one class and, and seeing how it, it feels for you. Um, so on our website, I'm sure we have the links already in there. Someone will post it again. It's iyta.org live offerings. Uh, feel free to check that out. We also have a podcast, uh, which 
I love doing too. I, I get to host and interview all sorts of uh, interesting different people in, in the yoga world that's available on, on all podcasting platforms. Um, yeah. Integral yoga podcast is, is what it's called. Um, yeah. Find us Facebook, Instagram, uh, and any information about integral yoga too, that, you, that you're looking, looking to find uh, integralyoga.org would be really the place for that. So thank you once again, Joe, thank you everyone. It's been fun. Absolutely. And again, we'll, put, we'll, we'll send all of these links that we've mentioned that are, that are mostly written in the chat here as a post, um, as a post communication, really want to thank you guys for, you know, a lot, you know, finding ways that we can stay connected during this, you know, during this very remote environment now. And so offering these virtual live online classes, I think are um, such amazing, even the virtual teacher trainings, it's just, it's all, you know, it, it's been, it's very inspiring seeing so many businesses and, you know, entities pivot and find ways to stay connected during all this and just really appreciate the efforts because it's, it's certainly been helpful. But uh, anyway, guys, thank you all. Appreciate everybody for coming. Remember, um, check the schedule on biyogi.com for our, for our future events. And um, we'll, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Avi. Yeah, take care, everyone. Bye now.